Hi guys, in today's video we're going to take a look at what is percentage yield, the importance of percentage yield, limiting reagents, a worked example, exam style questions and finally a summary. So firstly, what is percentage yield? Well percentage yield gives us a measure of the effectiveness of a synthetic procedure and the equation we use to calculate it is the actual yield divided by the theoretical yield multiplied by 100% to give us a percentage. So what's the importance of our percentage yield? Because it is incredibly important. Well, the percentage yield tells us what percentage of our reactants have been converted into the product. It indicates how successful our chemical reaction has been. Now, percentage yield is not always 100%. This is due to many reasons. The first of which is that unwanted byproducts may be produced as a result of side reactions occurring. So I've indicated that unwanted byproduct by showing that little green compound over there. Not all of our grey reactant is forming our blue product. Some is forming this green byproduct. Some of the reactant may remain unreacted in the reaction vessel. Some product may be lost. And the reaction may not proceed to completion if it's in equilibrium. So now we've had a look at percentage yield and the importance of it, let's have a quick look at the idea of limiting reagents. In a reaction with multiple reagents, one of these reagents may be limiting. What we mean by that is one chemical is often in excess. It's in surplus, there's more than enough of it to react and there's some left over. The other chemical is going to be the limiting reagent. It's not in excess and it dictates the amount of product that is produced. So I've got an analogy to explain this and make it a bit clearer. Here we have some ingredients for a cake. The recipe includes, amongst other ingredients, three eggs and 100 grams of flour. In the cupboard, we have 10 eggs and one kilo of flour. Now you can see that the one kilo of flour, which is our 1,000 grams of flour, allows us to make 10 cakes, knowing that there's 100 grams required for each cake. So that's 1,000 divided by 100 to give us 10. We have 10 eggs in our cupboard and three are required for every cake. Now 10 divided by three is giving us 3.333. That's three and a third. So we can only make three cakes. We can see that here, the eggs are our limiting reagents. We simply don't have enough eggs to make more than three cakes, even though we have more than enough flour. This is the idea with our limiting reagents. Although the flour is in excess, like our reagents in excess, it's the eggs, the limiting reagent, that dictates how much product, in this case, the cake, that can be made. So let's have a look at a chemical example to put this into context. Nitrogen and hydrogen react according to the following equation to form ammonia. This may be an equation you're familiar with. 0.5 grams of nitrogen and 0.6 grams of hydrogen are reacted together. Now we know the stoichiometry of the reaction. The nitrogen and hydrogen react in a ratio of 1 to 3. We also know the masses involved and we can work out the molar masses from our periodic table. So let's see how to perform this calculation. Which is the limiting reagent? And I've given here our little triangle of our equation to give us number of moles, mass and molar mass. So we have nitrogen and we have hydrogen. We have 0.5 grams of nitrogen and we have 0.6 grams of hydrogen. That's our mass. We can look at the molar masses of each of these two elements. We can look at our periodic table to see the molar mass of hydrogen is 1 and that of nitrogen is 14. Now you can see we have a diatomic forms, N2 and H2. So that's going to be 14 times by 2 to give us a molar mass of 28 and 1 times by 2 to give us a molar mass of 2. We can then work out the number of moles using the equation the number of moles is equal to the mass over the molar mass. So that's 0.5 divided by 28 to give us 0 0.017 and 0 0.6 divided by 2 to give us 0.3. Now we can see here that 0.017 is smaller than 0.3, indicating to us that the nitrogen is going to be the limiting reagent. Ethane is a hydrocarbon. It can be combusted in oxygen according to the equation given below. 16 grams of ethane is combusted to produce 22 grams of carbon dioxide. What is the percentage yield of this reaction? So, the first thing we're going to do is write out our equation. We know that the actual yield divided by the theoretical yield times by 100 is going to give us the percentage yield. So we know that the actual yield 
is 22 grams. Now we can calculate the theoretical yield. So we know that we're starting with 16 grams of ethane. So the mass of our ethane is 16 grams. In order to investigate the molar ratios involved in this reaction, we can use the rearrangement of the equation that the number of moles is equal to the mass divided by the molar mass. So we can work out the molar mass of our ethane, C2H6. Looking at a periodic table, we can see that carbon has a molar mass of 12 and hydrogen 1. So the molar mass of our ethane is going to be 12 multiplied by 2 plus 1 multiplied by 6 to give us a total molar mass of 30. If we then have a look, we can see that the number of moles is equal to the mass divided by the molar mass, as you can see from this reaction triangle here. So the mass is 16 divided by the molar mass of 30 gives us 0.533 moles of ethane. If we have a look at the equation and the molar ratios, we can see that two moles of ethane will go ahead to produce four moles of carbon dioxide. So that's a two to four ratio. We can simplify that to a one to two ratio, just dividing through by two. So that's telling us that if we have 0 0.533 moles of our ethane, we're going to produce 1.066 moles of CO2. We're producing twice as much. Again, we can use a rearrangement of this equation to find out the mass of carbon dioxide we expect to be produced. So we can see that we know the number of moles. We can work out the molar mass of our CO2. If we have a look again at the periodic table, we can see that carbon has a molar mass of 12 and oxygen 15.99, which we can round to 16. So that's 12 plus 16 times by 2 to give us a molar mass of 44. So rearranging this equation over here, we can see that mass is equal to the number of moles multiplied by the molar mass. So that's going to be 1.066 multiplied by 44 to give us 46.904. So now we can substitute this theoretical value of carbon dioxide into our initial equation. So the actual value was 22 divided by the theoretical value of 46.904, multiplying by 100 to give us a percentage, will give us that 46.9%. So the percentage yield of that reaction is 46.9%. Now to move on to question two. NH3 ammonia can be produced by the reaction given below. 10 mole of hydrogen is reacted with excess nitrogen to produce 20.25 grams of ammonia. What is the percentage yield of this reaction? So again, we can write out the equation that the actual over the theoretical multiplied by 100 is going to give us the percentage yield. So the actual yield in this instance is 20.25 grams. Now we're told there's excess nitrogen. That's telling us there's enough nitrogen and it's the hydrogen that's the limiting factor. So from our reaction up here, we can see that three moles of hydrogen reacts to form two moles of ammonia. That's a three to two ratio. So if we have 10 moles of hydrogen, we're going to produce 10 divided by three multiplied by two. That's 6.667 moles of ammonia produced. So now we're going to use a rearrangement of that equation. That the number of moles is equal to the mass divided by the molar mass. We know the number of moles is equal to 6.667. We want to find the mass. In order to do that, we need to know the molar mass of our ammonia, our NH3. If we look at our periodic table, we can see that nitrogen has a molar mass of 14 and hydrogen 1, meaning our ammonia will have a molar mass of 14 plus 1 times 3, a molar mass of 17. So we can substitute these values into our equation. The mass is equal to the number of moles times by the molar mass. So the number of moles is 6.667 and the molar mass is 17. That's going to give us a mass of 100 and 13.33 grams. So now we know the theoretical mass. So we can do the actual mass, which we know is 20.25 divided by the theoretical mass of 113.33 multiplied by 100 to give us a percentage yield of 
17.87%. So now to look at our final question. Water can be formed through the combination of hydrogen and oxygen as is shown in the reaction below. If 30 grams of oxygen and 3.5 grams of hydrogen are combined to form 29 grams of water, what is the percentage yield of this reaction? So again, our first step is going to be to write out actual over theoretical multiplied by 100 is going to give us our percentage yield. We know that the actual yield in this instance was 29 grams. So we haven't been given any information as to which reactant is in excess. So we can see which one is in excess and which one is the limiting reagent. So we have our hydrogen and we have our oxygen. The masses of each are that we have 30 grams of oxygen and 3.5 grams of our hydrogen. We can calculate the molar masses of each of our reactants. Looking at the periodic table, we can see that hydrogen has a molar mass of 1. We have diatomic hydrogen, so that's going to be 1 times 2 to give us a molar mass of 2. We can look at the molar mass of oxygen, seeing that oxygen has a molar mass of 15.99, which we're going to round to 16. So again, diatomic, that's 16 times by 2 to give us a total molar mass of 32. We can now work out the number of moles using the equation that the number of moles is equal to the mass divided by the molar mass. So the number of moles is equal to 3.5 divided by 2 to give us 1.75. And for oxygen, that's going to be 30 divided by 32 to give us 0.9375 moles. I'll write in the unit here just to be clear as what we're using. So we can see that 0.9375 is smaller than 1.75 and it is in fact oxygen that is our limiting reagent. So if we go ahead and have a look at the reaction and the equation for this reaction, we can see that one mole of oxygen goes to form two moles of water. So that's a 1 to 2 ratio. So if we had 0.9375 moles of oxygen, that would form twice as many moles of water. So that's 1.825 moles of water, H2O, that is formed. So now again, we're going to use a rearrangement of the number of moles is equal to the mass over the molar mass. We want to know the mass. So therefore, we need to use the number of moles, which we know, and the molar mass. The molar mass of water, H2O, can be calculated by looking at our periodic table. We can see that oxygen has a molar mass of 15.99, which we round to 16, and hydrogen 1. So that will give our water molecule a molar mass of 1 times by 2 added to 16. So a total of 18. So the mass that we would expect would be the number of moles, 1.825, multiplied by the molar mass, 18, giving us an expected mass of 33.75 grams. So now we can substitute this value back into our initial equation for centre yield. The actual, which is 29, divided by the theoretical yield, which is 33.75, multiplied by 100, will give us a percentage yield of 85.93%. So let's take a look at question four. Aspirin is formed in a multi-step process from a substance called sodium phenoxide. There is a one-to-one -one ratio of sodium phenoxide reacted to the aspirin produced. The molar mass of aspirin is 180 grams per mole, and the molar mass of sodium phenoxide is 116 grams per mole. The process consists of three steps. The overall yield of the first step is 90%, the second step is 80%, and the third step is 98%. We're asked to calculate the mass in tonnes of aspirin that be formed from one tonne of sodium phenoxide. This question, as you can see, is a rather long calculation question, and it holds three marks. So where do we start? Firstly, let's look at the overall yield. Well, we're told that the first step has a yield of 90%, the second 80%, and the third 98%. So we can work out the total yield of all three steps by multiplying these together. And then multiplying by 100 to give us an overall yield of 70.6%. So that is the overall yield of all three steps involved in this process to form aspirin from sodium phenoxide. So the next step is to calculate how many moles of sodium phenoxide we start with, remembering that the number of moles is equal to the mass divided by the molar mass. So the moles of sodium phenoxide 
is equal to the mass of sodium phenoxide divided by the molar mass. We're told we start with one ton. That's one million grams divided through by the molar mass, which we're told is 116 grams per mole to give us 8,621 moles of sodium phenoxide. Now if we calculate the number of moles of aspirin that's formed. So we know there's a one-to-one -one ratio of sodium phenoxide reacting with aspirin. So that's 8,621. We know the yield of the reaction is 70.6, so we'll multiply by 0 0.706, giving us 6,086 moles formed. So now we want to work out the mass in tons of aspirin formed, as that's what the question is asking us. So the mass, as we can see here, is the number of moles multiplied by the molar mass. So we know we have 6,086 moles Multiplying that by the molar mass given to us of 180 grams per mole will give us 1,095,517 grams. We're asked to give the answer in tonnes. So converting to tonnes, we get 1.096 tonnes. Just rounding up there. So this question, a long calculation question, holds three marks. The first comes from calculating the overall yield of the first three steps. The second from calculating the correct number of moles of both sodium phenoxide and then of aspirin formed. And the third comes from calculating correctly the mass in tons of aspirin that's formed from this reaction. Now you mustn't be worried if a question involves chemicals you aren't familiar with. As you can see, you don't need to recognise the chemical aspirin or sodium phenoxide in order to do this question. You just need to work with the numbers and ratios they're giving you and apply the calculations that you know to this question. Hey guys, I hope you're enjoying the video. If you're looking for an amazing A-level chemistry resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the snap provide smiley face and together let's make A-level chemistry a walk in the park.